Welcome to the cold, snowy Ike Gauntlet. And I have, as always, Mr. Truck, Frozen <laughs> Whiskers. Frozen Whiskers Cat with us. And today we're going to take this brand new 2015 GMC Canyon up the Ike Gauntlet and see how it does towing. Are you ready, Kent? I'm ready to get warm. <laughs> Let's go do this. <laughs> and that is coming up next on the Fast Lane Truck. This mid-size GMC Canyon may be a lot of things, but small it is not. It has a full-size bed. It has four doors. It's basically a full-size truck from 15 years ago, but it is also body on frame. So while this is a lifestyle truck, it is a very capable hauler. 7,000 pounds is the limit on this. And we've got just over five and a half thousand pounds in the back. Why? Because, well, we didn't want to max it out because that was the amount of weight that we've used when we've tested the Frontier and of course the Tacoma. Style-wise, it's aggressive, it's modern, it's very good looking. Now it depends on you if you're a GM guy or a GMC guy because of course the sister truck or brother truck to this is the Chevy Colorado. I think they're both very good looking trucks. I should say this, Kent. We do not recommend somebody using this size of a horse trailer, right? This is more That's truck true. a two, two horse trailer, not the big yeah. one that you got back there. Exactly. That's like a 17 foot. We call it a three horse. This size of a truck, you'd be good with a two horse. Of course, we're not overloading this. I mean, this tray, this truck, uh, according to GM, was rated to tow 7,000 pounds. We're at 5,600 pounds. Uh, we think that's a good weight for it. We've got the weight distributing hitch on there. We're doing everything to be safe. But you can see how bulky this trailer is. It's wide. It's seven foot three wide, which makes it hard to see around with normal mirrors. And uh, a two horse is what I would recommend for this size of truck. And these mirrors are pretty small. I mean, they're they're yeah. good for you know regular everyday driving, but not for towing. Exactly. Yeah, we've got some extensions we can put on if we need them. They look ugly. They do look ugly, but <laughs> and here we go. We're about to pop out of the tunnel. Now, do you have it in uh, tow haul mode? Because I noticed uh, it does have it. No, the button we had it on sitting there, and now it is. Now it is. So we do have tow haul mode, uh, which hopefully will do some uh, some uh, engine braking on the way down. Right, right. Now, from the factory, this does not have an integrated brake controller, and that causes problems. When you got traders. You got to install your own. What we have in here is an auto tow box which wires into the trailer and it activates by your trailer wires. When I step on the brakes of the truck, the signal goes through the auto box and that breaks the trailer. So we have our system on the trailer, not on the truck. And that's what, you know, you have to have something when you're doing these kind of tests. And I'm gonna to have to brake a little here in the yeah, middle Yeah, it's gonna haul an ass, man. <laughs> yeah, it's picking up steam. It's not using any kind of uh, uh, engine braking to really slow us down, is it? I mean, you not can always, yeah, you can tow mode, I can tap it down, but the, yeah, we're trying to stay close to 60. And that's another thing with this trailer, when we're talking about being safe, this is a wide trailer, the wide track. I mean, the axles on this trailer are a lot wider than the truck, which also makes things can get a little hairy. So, you know, a smaller trailer is more ideal. We're towing trailers with the fast lane truck and we're always into safety. So we, of course, have weight distributing hitch on this. When we started this project with this truck this morning, we used the way safe hitch to get our tongue weight. And now we know where that's at. We're right at 10%. But this is a class three hitch. This truck from GMC requires that over 5,000 pounds trailer that you use a weight distributing hitch. So that's why we're doing that. So we put the weight distributing hitch on, have adjusted, and it's, uh, it's an Anderson weight distributing hitch. And the grade shifting on this, I don't know where it's calibrated at, 
Now, obviously, it's different than what a half ton or a three quarter ton would be because it's not giving us much break, much uh, great braking at all that I can tell. Yeah, I don't think this thing is set up for it. Let's face it, this is more of a lifestyle truck. Yeah. Yeah, it's not really set up to do any kind of heavy duty uh, hauling like a heavy duty truck or even a full size truck. Exactly, and I really like this truck, but I yeah, I would not use it for, for big towing or by any means. I mean, if you're towing boats, you're towing four-wheelers, you're towing, you know, jet skis, that's where it's at. We've also got our great UltraFab jack here, which makes it easier to put all this stuff in. But we want everything balanced and safe for the trailer and coming up and down this big hill. Now the truck, we weighed this, it was uh, 10,790 combined, the truck and trailer. Now the trailer weighed 5,600 pounds, so that's 560 pounds tongue weight, 10%. The truck, GBW is 6,000 pounds, and we were right a hair under that. So that's with two guys, of some camera equipment, we're right at our, our maximum GBW, which also includes tongue weight. So if we were to pull a 7,000 pound trailer, we'd be 200 pounds over on our GBW on the truck. All this we take into consideration so we can tow safely for you folks to see how it's done. Now some of you may be wondering how come in the past we've used a boat and now we're using a trailer. Well, um, the boat actually was getting damaged. So now we've got a real trailer with controllable weights which we really couldn't do with the boat. And the problem with the boat was sometimes, since it was a real boat, sometimes it had a gas in it, sometimes it didn't have gas in it, right? And it would change the weight around. Uh, and now we've got a very controllable you can see weighable number. So I want to be able to move things around. So we actually moved some of the center blocks. There's 10 of them back there. We moved some of them clear into the front part of the trailer in the dressing room. And if we needed to, we could have moved the four-wheeler forward. So we, we got very adjustable there and we dialed it right in to where we're 550 pounds tongue weight going by the weight safe scale on the, the, the other hitch we had on here. An inch and, an inch and a quarter is what a squat, which isn't bad. And that's crucial for safe towing, right? Because if you don't have enough tongue weight, you're going to get that kind of trailer sway. Right. The trailer will go crazy on you. And, and if, if you have, have too much, what happens? Well, too much, and then you're squatting the truck, and then, you know, that's putting you know, like more that. pressure on your back axle. Yes. You really don't. You try not to overload the rear axle. You're trying to keep the truck level and the trailer level. So, guys, keep in mind that it is... 19 degrees out there when we do this <laughs> brake temperature test <laughs> and that will affect trust me that will affect how hot the brakes both on the truck and on the trailer have gotten but let's uh do the test anyway and and see uh, if we've uh gotten it right now we got to park in a snowbank here yeah front brake oh 206 degrees oh that's nice <laughs> hot day. Rear truck brakes is 241. Huh. Huh. Trailer brakes, 28 degrees. It shows 28 degrees on the yeah, and we're, let me, we, let me we try again. We, but we haven't braked much. We really haven't braked. Twenty six. I touched them. They're really. I mean, the 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 wheel is really cold itself. So yeah, yeah. Well, we, so, we were discussing that coming down the hill, Roman and I, and it. We I didn't brake much at all with the truck, so I can't imagine there's much heat built up. Now this GM six cylinder is found in a lot of GM products. Here it puts out 305 horsepower and 269 pound-foot of torque. It's paired to a six-speed automatic transmission that is automatically switched into all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive depending on how you choose to use it. All in all, it's a very good power plant. A little thirsty though. All right, Ken, here we go up the I gauntlet. I have the stopwatch as always, and I will start it when we get past this yellow sign. Uh, oh, look at that, they put in, uh, oh yeah, yeah they put in stop lights, all right. But this is where we usually started, so here we go, start. Whoa, you got a floor? 45, 
5,000 RPM, 5,500 RPM, 6,000, 65, 68. We redlined it. 68. Are we in tow haul? Uh, we were the last time. <laughs> now we are. <laughs> Good. All right. First and foremost, what's the axle ratio? Uh, 3.42. Okay. All right. You know, it's always apples to oranges. And guys, it's almost impossible to hook up uh, two or three trucks that have the same axle ratio. So uh, in the ideal world, that's what would happen, but it's not going to happen. So um, 65 miles an hour, I don't know. I'm going to go too fast. Yeah, we got to wait for it to start going uphill a little bit. This front part of the I Gauntlet is pretty, uh, well, it's not that steep, but as we get a little bit farther into it, it starts to bite. Now, the I yeah. Gauntlet is going from about 9,000 to just under, what, 11,000 feet of elevation. Yeah. And we go wide open throttle, and hopefully we'll have a clean run. A clean run means we have no cars ahead of us to block us. Uh, and right now we're doing just a little bit above 60 miles an hour, which is the speed limit, so I think we're cool. And I can see ahead of us it's going to start to kick up. Yeah, which is good, because this thing was going to go fast. <laughs> We've loaded this trailer instead of water totes. We've got a four-wheeler in there and center blocks in the front. I did that this time because I want a smaller truck. I want to make sure we have tongue weight balanced right, the proper tongue weight, that 10%. So by having the center blocks in a four-wheeler, I can actually move our weight, which we had to do. We actually had to move it forward to get a balanced load. No dead horses. No dead horses in this video. <laughs> We're running 6,000 RPM. It's this, nice. Yeah, this thing knows it needs power to pull this hill. Of and course, we're averaging 4.1 right now. <laughs> MPG. Well, I mean, that's some of the other trucks we've done have done two and three. So, and this is pulling 5,600 pounds. I, I like this little truck, and it actually, I mean, I've got, uh, I'm running almost 65 miles an hour, and I need more room here. I'm about to move over to the fast lane. Well, we're slowing down. Don't get too excited. Right. <laughs> hey, are you comfortable with this truck? It's yes, I am. Truck, I, I really like this truck. You know, it's even the back seat. I've, I've had a lot of mini trucks. We used to call them mini trucks. Several brands. You know, you couldn't really ride in the back of any of them, except for the grandkids. But this one, two, I can fit in there. I wouldn't put three of me back there, but two of us could fit. In the front, I really like. I mean, this is it's a lot of crossovers you get into. Your center console's touching my leg. The door's touching my leg. And here, I actually feel very comfortable. I, I'm a big guy. I'm a heavy duty guy and I, I, I feel fine. I like this truck. I like the ride of it. Uh, you know, I'm, uh, this is a lot of times you don't need a great big truck to pull a great big trailer. You need something like this. Everything you touch is soft. Everything you look at is expensive, and that's because this truck at almost $39,000 is expensive. You can get a full-size truck for that, but of course you couldn't get the utility of a small truck. And what I mean by that is the ability to park it in small spaces, even though it ain't that small. Now, uh, there are uh, two versions of this truck in the Chevy lineup, right? Right. You can get the four-cylinder and you can get the six-cylinder. Here, you only get the six-cylinder. And of course here, this is the top of the line truck, so it's almost $39,000. And for that amount of money, you can certainly get a full-size truck. Well, yes, it is. It's in the pricey part. But so does Toyota Tacoma. Tacoma is a very pricey truck, They get too. expensive, too, especially yeah. if you get the one with the yeah. off-road package, which this has, of course. Yeah. They call it all-terrain. Tacoma would be the TRD or TRD Pro. Nissan uh, does the same thing with their Pro 4X. And having you know, driven all four of them off-road, uh, this one doesn't have quite the amount of uh, clearance that the other two have, especially with that really low chin spoiler. But we're here talking about towing. And the one truck we have not towed with is a Tacoma. Yes. Are you listening, Toyota? <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have a brand new, for 2015, first time ever TFL Golden Hitch Award. We're going to find out who or what is the best towing truck in the land, Kent. Light duty, heavy duty, and of course, 1500. And uh, the key of that is we have to have tested the truck. So there are a number of trucks that we have yet to test, and Tacoma is one of them. How are we doing on speed? Well, we're cranking out to 61 miles an hour, and I'm I'm still 5500 RPM. The RPM band has been great on this. I, I wish the V8s did that and the, and the bigger GM trucks, because this one is managing power very well. Let's do the uh, sound test now that it's at full rev.
Can you guys see that? We're at about uh, 70 or just under 70 decibels, which is very quiet. Yeah, and it uh, you know it sounds, it sounds you can hear that motor wrapping up tight. But you know I'm very comfortable in this truck. The only thing that's not favorable for me is I wish I had better towing mirrors. I'd like to see up the and down. Yeah, there you go. Look, he's no trader. He's flying by us. But you know the, the mirrors need a little more room. But the, for this class of truck, you're not going to get that. I really like GM's bed. This canyon bed, it's, this one's a 6.2. They also have a 5.2 foot. And at the 6.2 is the ideal side. You can get small four wheelers in there, you can get motorcycles in there, you can do so much with that size of a bed. And they got the step in bumper, like the big brother. And it has the handle. And it has a torsion drop tailgate. So it's a very usable bed. In the front, it has a little extrusion coming into it for the fuel tank. So you lost a little bit of room, not, not much. But you got a bed liner cap, you got a cap on the tailgate. I really like this bed. You got cargo tie downs in it. This one has a sprayed in bed liner. Very useful bed. Uh, but no, everything else in here fits me so well. I, I, I'm tickled to death with this truck, and, I, and I'm so glad that there's a six foot two bed option on it, which this truck has. It's actually usable space. You can haul more stuff in it. You can get a four wheeler back there? Yeah, you can get a four wheeler. You can get my Kawasaki 300, and we have in the trailer would fit in the back of this. And uh, you know, I know it's. Uh, and your hat fits, man. It does. Look at this. <laughs> the headrest a little bit hits me once in a while. But you know, you look at the Ram. They, they're claiming now that their bed, their bed is six foot four. I think they've still been six foot three since 2003. But this is very close to you know within an inch or two of what the full size Ram bed is on a short bed. So. Yeah, but, I, well, but it's not. It's narrow, right? Will it fit yes. a full uh, yeah. uh, slate of uh, 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 drywall? It will on the fender wheels. They've not. You're right. It won't fit between the fender wheels because yep. it's not four feet in there. Uh, this one is about six inches narrower than a full size truck. But they've notched out the fender wheels, so you can light plywood up in there if you block it properly. You can get by with a whole lot of stuff in here. Okay, I can put that guy in there. Yeah, it's a yeah. side by side. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know what I'm impressed with is that this to me feels like a completely new breed of truck. When you compare it to basically the Tacoma and the Frontier, which are the only the two trucks in this you know, small truck category. Ken, what I like about this truck is that it feels like a new breed of truck, right? The trucks that this competes with, the Tacoma and the Frontier, those are kind of old school, body on frame, trucky trucks, right? This to me feels just like a baby Sierra, like they took it and shrunk it down one size. Yeah, yeah, and that's what it looks like too. It looks so much like the Sierra, and you know, which is the difference between the, the Colorado and the Silverado, but the Canyon and the Sierra, you definitely know they're related. Man, we've been flying up this hill. Check it out. We're at... Uh, oh, we're 60 miles an hour. Yeah, 7. And we've been maintaining the speed limit almost exactly the whole way up. Now, we've got a truck up here. It's going to get a little tricky. Yeah. But we're almost to the top, so let's see if we can get up and have a complete clean run to get you a clean time. And right now, we're at uh, 3.6 mpg, so uh, fuel efficient, not so much. Powerful, yes. But that, those are kind of on two different ends of the spectrum, right? Right. Efficiency right. And, and then I'm going to have to slow down because that weighs too much truck bit, traffic. Yeah. Yeah. If they would get out of my way, we we're, well, we're almost close. there. We're close. We didn't slow down much. And we are just feet away from uh, the finish line. And here comes the time. So it's not quite a clean run, but you know, it's close enough this time around. And I think we probably lost about three seconds there. Are you floored? Yeah, I'm, I'm I went back to the floor as soon as I could. All so right. yeah. All right, here we go. We're coming across the line and stop right there. There's your time. Seven minutes and 54 seconds which is freaking fast that dude. is that is you know i'm gonna to have to say that i was full of beans earlier when i said i didn't think this would pull 7,000 pounds up a gauntlet and i was wrong it would pull 7,000 pounds but then there's another problem you have with truck numbers from the manufacturer we are at almost 6,000 pound gbw with our tongue weight with us in here the camera equipment so if you didn't put dead a seven, horse. Uh, that dead horse, and if you put a seven thousand pound trailer behind here, that'd be an extra two hundred pound sorry. tongue weight. It's frozen. It's not dead. We don't know if it's, it's dead yet. It's definitely frozen. <laughs> you know, it may come back to life, like Walt Disney. But uh, you know, that's uh, I don't know how you would get to a seven thousand pound trailer and have ten percent tongue weight. You'd have to be less than ten percent tongue weight, which I wouldn't advise. So this will tow the weight, but I don't know why they won't give us more capacity to yeah. match that. You know, I think it has to do with. Uh, Fuel efficiency, right? Yeah. And drivability. It could be, and that way they're kind of keeping you away from the heavier trailer because you're not going to be able to find a tongue weight to match it. Exactly. So. Exactly. I, I think if I were uh, running the company, <laughs> then I would <laughs> I would say if people want to tow, they should move up to the bigger, you know, 
exactly. Fifteen hundred. Yes, yes, that's that's true. If you're going to tow a bigger trailer, you wouldn't mess with with a small truck. You would get a bigger truck. Well, that's true, and, and if you had a second truck, this would be the one I would really like this, and and that's the thing a too. Second truck, what a great idea! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> everybody wants second a second truck. car with my second Your truck. Second truck, yeah. But I the love thing that. with a second truck, see, I fit in trucks so well. It's like sitting in a chair. You know, a car you lay down, you crawl into, and you squeeze around the B pillar, and a truck you just jump in it like you know your truck, your your chair at your kitchen table. I fit these so well, and I can slide in and out all day, no problems. I can't slide in out of a car all day. I'm not sure I'd pull 7,000 pounds with that up the Ike Gauntlet. I think the load we have is, is a good weight for it. I actually, that, that's, that's where I would stop. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, this is a lifestyle truck that will pull your boat. You can load up a four-wheeler. It's a small truck for small loads. It's not meant to be hauling horses. Exactly. It's not made for the big trailer, so why do it? And on that note, as always, it's Kent. And Mr. Truck. And Roman saying thanks for watching and check out tfltruck.com for more news, views, and of course, all sorts of truck reviews. Ciao, and I'm gonna go do some donuts in the Raptor. Why? Because I can, Kent. <laughs> I'm gonna thaw out. Get me inside.